Hello. Uh, today we're doing espresso in the 80s. Uh, when I first saw the title, John uh, and Paul worked on it, and I actually thought I was born in the 80s, so I thought it's something about the history <laughs> of espresso, and I got kind of excited. Yeah. And then you just like went, no, that is not what's happening. So <laughs> tell me what is what is espresso in the 80s? Um, so I can see where the confusion has come from, and what we're referring to is just the temperature in centigrade, what, uh, how we're extracting the uh, mm. coffee. And, you know, it's, it's rather unusual to hear 80s as a, as a sort of temperature target to aim at. Um, so this, this is just a short sort of introduction on why we would use it mm. and when it would be useful and what taste you may or may not may experience with the two sort of uh, different temperatures. And how did you come up with that? <laughs> um, it was essentially me exploring on the D1 um, how to get a good black shot. And uh, we get fine print in um, as, that, as our usual sort of daily driver here. And this one or two batches came out a little bit darker than we normally expect. So it was tasting rather uh, overdeveloped and, you know, it wasn't nasty, but it wasn't sort of the flavors I'm, I'm generally used to. So having the flexibility of the D1, I really looked into what can I change to get the best out of this bean. Um, and in fact, I pulled one at a higher temperature here just before we came live. Um, so feel free to take this while I'm just discussing. And this is the sort of flavor I was generally tasting at. So this is a relatively similar roast to ha what I was testing with. And um, one of the flavor notes without getting into flavor too much is it's, it's a bit on the earthy and spicy side. So, um, and, and those flavors generally to really linger on in the aftertaste. Um, it's not that they're, they're unpleasant flavors, it's just flavors that I, I wish wasn't there to make a more balanced cup. Mm. Um, and in this shot, you will find with the higher temperatures and these sort of beans, it will be a bit more edgier, rougher, uh, and you know, not as smooth as, as, a, as a shot that you may have had somewhere else. Mm. And um, while it is still very drinkable, um, I would say that this would be uh, quite in line with a lot of the roast levels that we do see out in the world. Mm. And um, I just thought that, you know, what better to, to explore and also share what we've also done here at Decent. So um, some of the staff have mm. used this profile as well and had good success with it. So uh, it seems to be seems to be pretty successful. Well. What temperature is this boot on? So this one right here is at 90 degrees mm. um, and with a temperature decline of 10 degrees decline, mm. um, but it won't actually get there all the way. Oh, uh, so I've just changed this profile so the graph is gone, but mm. it should have been uploaded to Visualizer so you can have a look at the temperature decline on that profile I've just pulled here. Mm. Um, but you can see in the actual graph itself, it's a 10, uh, 10 degrees drop throughout the extraction. Right. And our goal really is to affect the last half or third of the extraction to really affect what we're trying to achieve here today. Okay, um, well, I hate to use this, but this shot is decent. It's yeah. just okay. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not making a decent joke. It's just like, <laughs> this is very acceptable. Yep. It's, it's fine. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not bothered by it, but it's also not special. Yes, yeah. It's fine. It's like I go to a coffee shop, I drink this, and I'll be like, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shop, you know, um, I would say. Is that, do you think that's fair? I think it's pretty fair because that's what you're tasting, mm. and you know, I cannot deny what anyone else is tasting. Mm. Um, from my perspective, I would say there is a lot of flavor in there, mm. but it's just very crowded, and yes. um, it's very hard to differentiate the flavors. It's in not there. clear. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. It's, it's not as uh, what some people would say cl has clarity in the shot. Exactly. Um, the, fl the flavor in there is very complex. Yeah. Um, and it's just that maybe you won't be able to taste those complexities um, in the espresso itself. But it lingers on as well. Yes. Yes. Which usually should not be the case, right? For uh, well, for I guess like light roast. Uh, for lighter roast, yeah, that would be less of the case. Mm. Um, but because this roast is a little bit darker than what we're normally used mm. to, um, we would expect the aftertaste to come out a little bit more as compared to a lighter roast. Mm. Um, so I've, um, while we've been discussing, um, I've just been reducing the temperature on this profile on the screen. Yeah. And if I put it up and we get the main screen on, um, you can kind of see I've now changed the starting temperature to 82. Right. And um, the preceding decline in temperature will also follow the same 10 degrees decline. 
And if I just go in, the rise and hold just has a drop of uh, three degrees, and then the decline has a drop all the way up to 72, so making that full 10 degrees stop uh, decline. Um, now, one thing I will say about this, uh, adding a decline step in your profiles in that it's, it's almost very much flow dependent. And what I mean by that is that um, the rate of the temperature decline will be directly affected by the flow rate that you have. So um, you will notice at the start of extractions where flow rate is at its slowest and bottoms out, um, it will be very slow to react to the temperature. But as the extraction goes on, you will also notice that the temperature decline will also accelerate as well. Um, but because we are using darker type roasts, um, I will say that don't expect the full 10 degrees and don't sort of um, be wanting to achieve that target either. Um, I would say you probably want to look out for around two to four degrees decline in your temperature for it to be have really any effect on the taste. Um, so hopefully uh, we have the, the dial on the uh, grind setting should have stuck. So I've not changed any of the recipes. So it's still all the metrics gram. are exactly the same except for the temperature. That's Is that right. correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just looking at this now, my flow rate has changed. And I think something, maybe I dosed a little bit less or my dose has not come out right. So I'm just going to pull another shot. Sure. Um, but I'll let you taste it first and let you see how you feel. And I'll put it in okay. here. Yeah. So what you should immediately taste is um, a slight lower in acidity. And I would say this would be the first thing a lot of people experience with a lower it's temperature shot. That's <laughs> a really good shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know you said something happened with the flow rate, but yeah. this is, it's significant, maybe because I'm comparing it to the first shot, but this is significantly better. Yeah. Um, it's so yeah, just walk me through what I am, experiencing now because I am actually not sure yeah <laughs> from, you know from what I taste is always like good not good this yeah. is a really good shot right so um, what I suspect is is the uh, as I was mentioning was the acid mm. and um, the main thing you will notice between the higher temperature shots and mm. the lower temperature shots is the difference in acidity and for reason unknown to me right now I'm not sure whether the temperature is affecting the types of acids that we're drawing out or we are literally just reducing our extraction. Mm. Um, for whatever the reason may be, um, the ultimate goal of using this technique was to create a better overall balanced shot. Um, I believe through my own tasting that the lower temperature shots are slightly less complex, and that may be due to the less uh, TDS in the extractions. But what I find very intriguing, very interesting with these types of shots is the smoothness and the texture for Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah, mm. so it's very slippery on the palate. Mm. Um, and the edginess that on the higher degree shot is almost gone. Mm. Um, and that would be referred to as the bitterness or astringency. Um, so we're really cutting out those unwanted flavors. Um, so rather than introducing this as, you know, use low temperature shots because that will make you the best espresso, um, it's not quite like that, but it's more of the lines of you will more consistently produce better balanced shots. Um, and this would be especially the case if you had, let's say, um, not as expensive beans or, as we just discussed, slightly darker roasted beans mm -hmm. uh, that may have been roasted darker because of the quality wasn't as high. Um, so all these things add up to you know, what you can pull out of it and how we should treat that bean towards extraction. Um, so for me, um, purposely designing a shot to under extract to a certain extent is quite a new concept, but with the explanations of why we're trying to do that, it should kind of make sense and hopefully will be an additional tool for you guys to use when you're really wanting to um, pull a shot for a milk drink, but not necessarily cut the ratio short, so your concentration of your final milk beverage will be a little bit short of what you're used to. Mm -hmm. So, Are um, you able to do this with a dual boiler machine, like to, to create that, like to, to do a lower temperature mm. and rely on the temperature gadget that you're seeing, um, as opposed to the decent, obviously? I think the answer to that would be you probably could, 
but I think there would be a lot of tinkering involved and um, you would have at least have to have a SCASE device in order to really accurately test what is the water temperature coming out of your boiler. And even if with the offset of the boiler to the group head, so offset meaning you set the boiler to a certain temperature, let's say 92, uh, but it comes out at 89, maybe 86. Can you explain to me what the offset is? like? What uh, so yeah, so it's the difference in temperature from the boiler temperature you set at to what the water comes out, out of the group head. So when I press the water flushing out here, what is the temperature of this water coming out? But here there is a, a thermometer. Yes, or, uh, yeah, like that's a correct. Gadget yeah. Inside the group head, correct? Yeah, so in the D1 we have the luxury of multiple uh, temperature sensors leading up to the group head and even one millimeters away from the puck so we can in real time accurately get what the coffee is brewing at. Mm. But in a dual boiler system, we don't have the luxury of all the sensors involved, so we have to manually, through trial and error, um, literally fine tune what is coming out of the boiler. Right. Um, even with that, uh, all that setting, um, you can still won't be able to uh, accurately real-time change and have a t temperature profiling. So you will be able to temperature surf, which is kind of what we're uh, going on about, where a barista will become more familiar with the hardware that they're using and able to manipulate or familiarize themselves with the rough temperatures that they're getting. And that may be, you know, flushing the group hair to really steaming, boiling your porter filter, or maybe even waiting a certain amount of time before they pull the next shot. Um, so while it is achievable, it does take a lot of work, um, but luckily, you know, with the DU1 helping you out, you don't have to go through all that effort and buy yourself a SCASE device to find out all the true, true accurate temperatures. So, um, so yeah, it can be done, but it just takes a lot more effort. It seems to me, just starting to learn about the coffee world in depth, that there is a lot of emphasis on temperature in general. Like, I didn't know before in going on this journey that the, the temperature of the porter filter mm. is important. And even people, people heating up their cups, <laughs> I didn't know about that as well. Yeah. W why is it such a sensitive thing so uh, in terms of, of stuff other than the actual coffee you're brewing? Yeah, uh, and I guess this would come down to uh, basic physics to an extent. So with added heat in the water, we have more kinetic energy. And with that extra kinetic, kinetic energy, we're able to draw out more of the flavors on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess it's kind of similar to when you brew a normal tea in a, in a teacup, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you will notice that the variance of your boiled kettle will affect the, the brew, the final brew, quite significantly. Uh, and the effect is the same in coffee. Um, so if you have a cold cup and then brewing in a cold cup, that will be significantly different to if you had a hot cup and brewing it in a hot cup. Um, and those concepts are transferred from one to the other. Um, and w in a commercial environment, that is really important because obviously you're selling a consumable product and um, for you to be able to get repeat business, um, it has to be a consistent product. Otherwise, generally or not, you won't see that customer again. So that's yeah. why kind of why a lot of baristas put a lot of focus on these little variables because right. they know it makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this one was, I was very happy with it. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that this temper, because the temperature in the beginning could make you a little skeptical, like this is just old coffee yeah, that the barista yes. left on the counter for a few yeah. minutes. Yeah. But honestly, I would prefer something like this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the regular espresso that I have, a lot of times it's too hot that I actually can't taste anything. Ah, okay. Right? Yes. It's not burning, but it's hot that like it just covers the flavor if that makes sense to you. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to this when I actually can taste everything. Yes. And because the profile itself like showed most most of the mm -hmm. flavors, I was able to enjoy everything. Yeah. So um, does that Again, I am skeptical about my own knowledge because no, I, I know it's pretty shallow. What, what you're on about is, um, I think we're touching upon two things. Mm -hmm. um, one being, how does the temperature of the actual coffee or brew itself affect the way you taste? Um, and we're also talking about the actual brew that we're brewing the coffee out of the espresso machine. Um, this is the older shot, mm -hmm. and as coffee cools down, you actually taste more of the flavors. So um, I would suspect this one will take a lot more uh, harsher uh, as compared to when you first taste right. it, as compared to the newer shot that we pulled just now. Mm -hmm. um, and that would 
sort of come in line with what you just said. Like, because it's a slightly cooler shot, you're able to taste it quicker. Yeah. Um, but because it is cooler as well, you're I able see. to taste more flavors. Right, so okay. it's, it's kind of like a, a multi-pronged thing that you're going for. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting, especially from a barista point of view, using the lower temperatures. Um, it is a little bit of a antagonistic point, you know, some, some baristas may feel that in order to extract proper espresso, you have to be within a certain range. Um, Are you well below that range now? I'm, yeah, really, really? below it. Um, huh. You know, even, even our, some of our recipes at 88 degrees, for example, is considered quite low for, for people who are used to light roast or medium roast. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is that we're just more accurate within the group head and we're able to lean on technology to manipulate the, the correct brew temperature that we're aiming at. Um, and, uh, you know, having that flexibility in there is just amazing. Um, but again, it's that um, breaking that concept of we must be in there. Um, I'm less rigid than that. I'm more taste focused. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter to me what the data is, as long as the what's in the cup is is what I'm aiming for. Uh, and for this case, it's a balanced cup, not necessarily a better cup, but more of a balanced cup. Um, I'm happy. So try to focus more on the taste rather than what is you know the standard. Uh, and you may just be surprised, or you may even just find out that you just didn't like that style of espresso, which is cool, you know? Yeah. Um, and so basically, I try to do this. If I have beans, light roast beans or medium roast beans that came out darker than they should be, yeah, or that they're not very high quality beans, mm -hmm. is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And um, it's, it's sometimes buying a bag of coffee is like a box of chocolates. You really don't know what you're gonna get. Right. Um, sorry for the cheesy line, but it's mm. very, very true. Um, and having techniques that you can use and still not waste that coffee and enjoy it is, is a much better thing uh, than just, you know, letting it go to waste. So um, that's one of the reasons why we, we wanted to share it, because I feel that it's a very common problem. Um, and, you know, I'm sure it, I'm not just the only one having a head scratching moment going, how can I get the most out of this right. bean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Great. Uh, do we have any YouTube questions? Um, they're not checking <laughs> yet, so we can just... Uh, yeah, if there's something I missed uh, about the detail... Actually, let me ask you this while they're sure, sure. getting to live chat. What was your purpose coming in, like, trying to change these, aside from just experimenting? Yeah, did, yeah. Did you have a goal in mind? Yes. Or was it more towards, like, just experimenting and not wasting beans? Um, it's a very good question, actually, and uh, I have to admit it was slightly personal on this front in that um, I'm used to uh, much shorter ratios, um, but the D1 has really pushed me to attack longer ratios. And um, unfortunately, the situation in Hong Kong is that a lot of places do roast quite dark. So my access to, you know, good quality beans that are consistent is unfortunately a little bit limited. Mm -hmm. So I was working with what I had um, and I just wanted to really attack along the ratios. So I was using, and, and fine print is an example where it was designed not to really be extracted such a long ratio. So um, using beans that were designed to be a one to one or one to 1 1.5, uh, but extracting them at one to two or maybe one to two and a half, um, if you said that to a person with experience, they would probably think you're over extracting and you know, you're probably pulling a lot of unwanted flavors. Um, in that process, obviously I did find that. Mm. Um, so I messed around with pressure, um, but ultimately I found more success with uh, temperature decline. And the inspiration was actually from the profiles themselves. So people were messing around with temperature profiling. I saw it on a profile and just thought, I'll give it a go, and immediately saw a significant improvement. And so I dived straight in and just really fine-tuned one profile to match fine print beans, um, and this is where we are today. So um, I'm really happy that I've stumbled upon something. There were some interesting data points in that if I went above 82, I didn't get such great success, and it was more dependent on your recipe. Um, so I really think that 82 with a decline, 10, 10 degrees decline down, uh, makes a significant difference that, you know, if you have a, like, a, again, 
uh, defect bean or a lower quality light, light roast or it was just darker than you want it to be, uh, give this a go. Um, and, and hopefully you will find some, some decent cuts in there that, that you just wouldn't have found otherwise. Nice. So. Uh, live chat? No? Okay, then we're good. Uh, yeah. Paul, thank you so much for sharing this with us. No problem, sir. Um, can people, so uh, I'm going to upload it on Visualizer, yeah? Yeah, that's right. So these shots have already been uploaded on Visualizer. Um, so if you're not aware of Visualizer, it's a, uh, it's a extra add-on that you can use on our uh, decent app. Just sign up, it's a quick and easy process. And then once you're on there, you can look up anybody on there. Uh, I think you just look up John Decent uh, and you'll be able to find these shots. And then within that page, you can download the profile, check out all the data, um, or even share that link to someone else who may have been interested. Perfect, and if you have any questions, you can always get in touch with us through the contact form on our website or our uh, Instagram, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Paul, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. See you at the next one. Thanks, Mohammed. See you.